focused on you. As we go on the air at noon, we're bringing you new information about a person shot and another who was run over in the Grove neighborhood in St. Louis. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. That shooting happened early yesterday morning in the Grove at the intersection of Manchester and South Taylor. Police now tell us one of the victims taken to the hospital was not involved in the shooting incident at that location. The trouble all started when someone opened fire on a group of people who mistakenly tried to get into the wrong car. A man was shot. The suspect took off. That person is still on the loose. Responding officers found a second person lying in the street. They've determined that woman was hit by a separate vehicle and was not involved in the shooting. That suspect was taken into custody. Both victims are listed in serious condition. Developing right now, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey has sent cease and desist letters to three area school districts. He accuses the districts of discrimination in student clubs, gifted programs, programs and hiring. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay brings us the latest on the claims as well as the school's responses. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey sent cease and desist letters to three area school districts, including Webster Groves, Lindbergh and Parkway schools. Now the AG is claiming that his office has received reports of religious and race based discrimination against students and staff. And now the Webster Groves School District is firing back. Bailey's letter to the Webster Grove School District claims officials there have instituted race based criteria for its employees and applicants. The letter goes on to claim if the reports are true, Webster Groves is breaking both state and federal law, adding that using race information to make hiring decisions violates that law. A district spokesperson fired back, calling the letter quote ridiculous and saying the district does not discriminate in its hiring practices. The statement goes on to say quote, However, the district is interested in having a diverse faculty to serve as educators to our diverse student population and is willing to take the effort to attract support and retain that staff. Now, in separate letters, Attorney General Bailey accused Lindbergh schools of discrimination in the district's gifted program. And then in the letter sent to Parkway schools, he claims discrimination in religious based student clubs. In the last 30 minutes, the Parkway School District put out a statement in part saying these accusations are unfounded. The statement reads, we know when students have activities that are meaningful to them personally and create a sense of belonging, they are more successful at school. Parkway is committed to supporting the diversity of religions represented in our student bodies and providing clubs and activities to support the interests and needs of students. The Lindbergh School District has not yet responded. We expect to hear from them later today. Happening this week, a former Jefferson County deputy expected to enter a plea Wednesday in a crash that claimed the life of his wife. Colby McCreary is facing misdemeanor charges. In December of last year, a judge reduced the felony charges of DWI resulting in death and involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors said they just couldn't prove those crimes beyond a reasonable doubt. Happening today, St. Louis Mayor Tashora Jones will present her Economic Justice Action Plan to the city's Reparations Committee. The plan has five goals to strengthen neighborhoods, close the wealth gap, improve health and education outcomes, expand the tax base, and grow the city's population. Tonight's meeting is at 6 p.m. It's at 1000 North Van Deventer Avenue. Also happening tonight, a community meeting in the Fox C6 School District to discuss the possibility of making a switch to a four day school week. According to our partners at Leader Publications, that meeting is slated for 630 this evening. It's at the Fox C6 Service Center. Parents and others will be asked to fill out forms there listing what they like about the idea, what concerns they have and what questions they have about the possible plan. If you can't make it tonight, two more meetings will be held in March and April. This afternoon, a local group will advocate to save the studio of the late local sculptor and city museum founder, Bob Cassily. The group, called Unseen in St. Louis, claims the current owners of the site near Lafayette Square aren't maintaining the building properly. They're calling on the city to stop potential demolition. If their efforts fail, the group wants St. Louis to preserve the facade, butterfly fence, and concrete statue on the property. Today's meeting is open to the public. It starts at 4 p.m. in Suite 2000 of 1520 Market Street, but will also be streamed on Zoom. Ever wanted the all-inclusive experience at a St. Louis Cardinals game? Well, to commemorate an expanding partnership between the Cardinals and Perficient, 
A special ticket offer has been announced for the Proficient Red Jacket Club. For 75 bucks, fans can now buy tickets for April and May games inside the all-inclusive club, or they can purchase tickets online. Members of the club enjoy an upscale buffet, full-service bar, as well as other activities. Well, if you haven't had the chance to hit the ski slopes yet, you are going to have to wait till next year. Hidden Valley is now closed for the season. Yesterday's last day of the season was celebrated with a spring fling featuring giveaways, specials and other fun festivities. Now, because of the warm weather, the resort had to cancel the pond skimming competition this year. Disappointing, but these winters are just getting shorter, Jim. Jim yeah. Castillo here yeah. with a forecast that includes temperatures in the 80s, Jim? Absolutely. You know, upper 70s and low 80s the next couple of days, so record highs. And uh, they were telling people at uh, Wildwood there in Hidden Valley to dress in Hawaiian gear. So uh, Hawaiian shirts, a good idea for that. You know, this is what we're expecting today. 79 for that high, 82 for tomorrow. Both will be records. The record today is 78, set back in 1996, and tomorrow's record, 79, back in 1981. On top of that, dry air and warm air, and then we get gusty this afternoon, so we have a red flag warning. That's for the St. Louis County area, all the way up north, Jersey County, Greene County, and then westward all the way through Franklin and Gasconade counties in Missouri. So not everyone, but what that means is do not burn. Critical fire conditions out there with the strong winds, a low relative humidity, and the dry brush that's in place. So we're good now, but as that storm system approaches us tomorrow, a chance of some thunderstorms. We're at 75 already right now, okay? Few minutes. Thank you, Jim. Some positive news right now for AT&T customers. They'll soon be seeing a $5 credit in their accounts. The reimbursement follows last Thursday's nationwide network outage. More than 74,000 customers lost service for hours. AT&T says it will give $5 to customers who were impacted, which is about the average daily cost of service. However, the credit does not apply to business and prepaid plans. The FCC is still currently investigating the issue. A warning this afternoon for parents. Coming up, what you need to know about an AI kidnapping scam and an uncertain future for a big downtown office building.